Hello, this is an Excel demonstration in supply chain management on inventory risk pooling. So let's bring up Excel. In Excel, we have four demand streams. And what is the difference between the individual demand and the aggregate demand, which would be inventory risk pooling? Well, first of all, we can see the benefit of risk pooling by looking at the correlation between these four with a correlation matrix. So go, we go under data, over here under data analysis, correlation, okay. Uh, the input range is gonna be all this data and notice I have uh, the labels in the top row, these are your columns, and the labels are in the first row. The output range, let's see, let's make it right here and say okay. And now we see the correlations. We see X1 is negatively correlated with X2, 3, and 4. Uh, X2 is correlated 47%, 60% with X3 and 4, and X3 and 4 is 18.6%. Is so all of these are less than 1. The greatest benefit is going to be X1 and X2. Uh, the least benefit is going to be X2 and X4, but it's, it's still less than 1, so there is a benefit. But aggregating all four of these is certainly going to help. So let's aggregate them. Let's add uh, a column here. And here, uh, let's uh, have an X1 plus X2 all the way to X4. And let's format this. Format this. Uh, and so let's add it up. Sum of uh, all of these. And then we bring it down. Okay, now what we want to do here, uh, first let's take the mean, the sample mean. Okay, and let's left, let's right justify this so we can see it. There we go. Uh, and this is going to be the average of all of these. And so let's bring this across. And there we have the average. And then we're going to be looking at uh, the sample standard deviation of each one of these. So that's going to be equal to standard deviation dot s of all of these in the first demand stream and every demand stream. Whoops. I missed the corner. Here we go. And there it is. Okay, now, here's the aggregate. Let's box this in and uh, highlight it. Okay, and now let's add and let's sum. Let's sum these. We'll sum the means and then we'll sum the standard deviations. And we see that the difference in the means is really nothing. But the differences uh, in the standard deviations is significant. As a matter of fact, it's uh, the difference here is uh, fifty-three percent of the total of the uh, of the sums, and so of the individual. And so the idea is, is the standard deviation significantly is decreased when you aggregate the data. Okay, the, rather than having, having each time. So up here, when you have safety stock, now if you remember the safety stock uh, is calculated by the Z value, which is the stock out, uh, which is a de uh, dependent on the stock out level, uh, times the uh, standard deviation Uh, times uh, the square root of the uh, lead time. Okay. Well, so if the stockout level here is the same for all of these, if the lead time is the same for all of these, the only difference in the safety stock is going to be the standard deviation. And notice the means are the same, so your lot size should be very similar. If you're uh, doing all four from one inventory, then each one individually. 
But the safety stock then will be different when you add all the safety stock up from these four. That's going to be much greater than the safety stock of the aggregate. And that's the whole concept behind inventory risk pooling. The amount of savings depends on how much the carrying cost is. And the difference between these is going to be 18.20602. In other words, whatever the carrying cost is, that's how much you're saving every inventory period by the safety stock. So that's an Excel demonstration on how to calculate inventory risk pooling. I hope this helps.